I'm uh, the founder of KSM, which is the largest ETF manager in Israel. I'm also a shareholder at uh, Beta Securities Poland. I need, uh, ah, here. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to tell you a story about one major event that changed dramatically the way the Israeli capital market has evolved. And I hope and believe that you will find it also interesting because in many ways, I think that Poles are much more similar to Israel than the, to European Union. After all, I don't know if you know, but uh, many of the Israelis are originally from Poland, so you can look at us like we are Polish, like you, only with a better sun tent, but unfortunately less hair. But, uh, Okay, let's start. <clears throat> okay, doesn't want to start. Oh, great. I think that all of you that sit in this room share the same goal. You all want that the Polish capital market will become better, stronger, with more asset under management, with more investors, with more product, with more services. And everyone here are doing their best in order to fulfill this goal. KNF and the Ministry of Finance, for example, they are building for us the infrastructure and they are keeping all of us safe. And the banks, the asset managers, the brokers, the underwriters, they are bringing the knowledge, their expertise, risking their money in order to bring the best products and services to the financial market so eventually the Polish investor will have the best financial supermarket. But just like I believe you share the same goal, I think all of you also share one major problem. The problem that I think that you are sharing is that the distribution channel in Poland are broken. They are broken because in many cases that I was an evidence to, I think that the distribution interest comes in first place. And when Mrs. Kowalski sees that she is not in the first place, she is going to look for alternative, not just in financial market, in every other market, even yourself. When you are not in the first place, you are going elsewhere. And when I look at the trading volumes of the Varsha Stock Exchange, I see problems. And when I speak with the young generation of Polish investors and I see that they are investing a lot of their money outside of the Polish financial market, I see a problem. And this problem comes into actions into several situations. You're probably familiar with them as well. First of all, there is a high cross-selling of products and services within the banks, regardless if they are the best for Mrs. Kowalski. Second, you have very high distribution fees, something is three to, to 60 to 80%. So it's like one of you going very exciting to buy a new apartment, and only afterwards you understand that 60 to 80% of the money that you paid went to the salesperson and not to the, to the constructors. And you have also, I think, a lot of uh, objective advisory system. And that leads, of course, to high management fees, limited only by strict regulation of KNF, very low mutual fund assets, very average based on reports of uh, asset management uh, results, and lack of very important instruments that are relevant for every financial market, like ETFs, like REIT, like uh, VC funds, like dual-listed companies. And I think that eventually what you are suffering from is that instead of having a Polish capital market, what you have here is more like a bank ecosystem or bank's capital market. And it's not just me saying that. It's also the NBP and the IMF, more than 80% of the financial assets are held by the banks. And the IMF is conducting a financial development uh, uh, survey every year. And the condition of Poland, this is the blue bars, is all right. But when you segmented it to financial institutes, which are the banks, and to financial uh, market, which is the stock exchange, you see the problem. You see that the banks are ranking in a very high place in the position, while the market stays behind. Now you have to understand, I'm not against the banks. I think the Polish banks are great. I think they're doing a great job and we need a strong bank. This is the base of every economy and without them, we haven't been here at uh, Bukovina. Yeah, Bukovina. But what I also think 
that banks need to understand that they brought the market into a place that they need to lose a little bit. They need to let more competition enter to the market. They need to help with the strength and the habit. They need to help the financial market reach the same place they are. Because if they do so, they, are, they will understand that instead of being big players in a small market, they could become a much bigger player in a much bigger market. It's a win-win-win situation. No one loses in this game if they will do it. And I'm confident of that because 20 years ago, that was exactly the situation that we had in Israel. When you look at our market from the inside, all the ingredients were there. We had great banks, great insurance companies, great asset managers, an operational stock exchange. But when you look under the hood, you see the real picture. And the real picture that bank control 100% of the customers, 100% of the deposit, 90% of the mutual funds, 90% of the pension funds. And in addition to that, they were also controlling the service provider. They were controlling the underwriter, the brokerage, the distribution channels. So eventually, they've created themselves a massive cross-selling system that serves mainly themselves. And, and, I, and I'm not blaming the bank because they are for-profit companies. But what is good for the bank wasn't good for the Israeli capital market because the consequences were, as you're already familiar with that in the Polish market, very low competition. The only competition that we had in our banks is acquiring new customers for the deposit because afterwards, the banks were selling their products to their customers. And I remember the CEO of the bank 20 years ago. I might look young, but I'm older. 20 years ago, when they were talking to one each other and they, they, they were saying to themselves, you know, don't touch my customers. I will not touch yours. Anyhow, we have a lot to do with our own customers. Uh, we had also a, a very low mutual fund industry because they didn't have any incentive for them to have money of investors uh, within the deposit. It's much more easy and much more money uh, for the bank. We had lack of product, high management fees, all the problems that you are facing. And if I can describe it, it was like a magical circle of conflict of interest that drew the monopoly position of the bank and a monopoly position of the bank that drew the conflict of interest. And it can go like that on and on and on unless the Ministry of Finance of Israel understood that if we would like to take the Israeli financial market to the, to the, to the next level, we need to bring more competition for the market. And back in 2004 or three, they set up a committee led by the CEO of the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Bacha, with the goal of increasing competition, reducing centralization, and reducing conflict of interest. Now, for two years, this committee worked very hard, interviewed every market participant, read a lot of research, and after two years, they came into the following conclusion. Now, I would like to give you a spoiler. This is not exactly what I want to suggest to the Polish market. But uh, I don't know if you remember, there was uh, once a commercial of a Volkswagen double cabin, you know, the, the box car, with the title or with the slogan, it may be ugly, but it gets you there. This is exactly how I see the reform in Israel. Maybe it wasn't the cleanest one, but it gets us there. So the first recommendation of the committee, which was very hard, they decided or they recommended that in order for us to increase competition, to create an objective advisory system within the market, we need to separate mutual funds and pension funds from the bank. We need to force them to sell them to other parties. The second thing they've recommended, very cleverly actually, they understood that the problem of the high management fees are not the management fees is the distribution fees. And you're also familiar with that. So they recommended to cap distribution fees. And the last thing that they recommended is that every bank should be forced to create its own objective advisory system that will be used in every transaction and will be documented. So financial advisor can do whatever they want, but they have to document and say why they suggested for the clients to do this and that, 
and not according to this advisory system. Of course, the banks, and excuse me for a minute, reforms makes me thirsty. Uh, of course, the banks were frightening. You know, if I was the CEO of a bank, I w this is exactly how I would feel, because I have a big cheese, and someone is telling me, look, move it, and it will be all right. No, I'm not sure it will be all right. So they were started threatening. They said, we will empty the, the products. We will sell new products to the customers. But gladly, the Ministry of Finance understood the importance of this reform and backed it by 100% because he knew it will not be only good for the market, it will be also good for the banks. And 17 years later, actually 18 years already later, the performance are outstanding in every parameter. If we're talking about uh, centralization, it was reduced from 90% to 60%, and there are different entities today. If, if 20 years ago, banks controlled pension funds and, and, and mutual funds, today we have different players that are controlling mutual funds and pension funds, and with less centralization. Management fees were cut by half, not because we made a regulation like you did on management fees, but because we kept the main problem, we kept distribution fees. Returns of the Israeli asset managers are among the best in the region in every parameter. And what about your financial supermarket, the stock exchange, I mean our financial supermarket, it eventually fulfilled its job to bring the best services possible for Mr. Cohen, which is the equivalent of Mrs. Kowalski in Poland. And it's uh, improved in every parameter. Corporate bond market, which is so important for the growth of the economy, grew from 10% to 40% uh, of, the, of the bond market on Tel Aviv Stock Exchange. The free float, which provide liquidity, grow from 50% to 70%. The participation of institutional, and you have to remember, they have alternative, like in Poland, they can trade in New York Stock Exchange. Their participation is, uh, grew from 50% from no, grew by double, sorry, and individual investor also, and you can see the number, uh, grew the number of accounts that are linked to the Aviv Stock Exchange from 20,000 to 700,000. Now, Israel is a small country. We are not, we are one quarter of the Polish invest, uh, investment, uh, Polish uh, uh, market. And the last thing, new products were starting to enter into the, into the market because now when the interest of the client is in the first place, we can bring everything that can make good for the client. It could be index fund, ETF, uh, REITs, uh, VC fund, you name it. And that is actually what's happened in Israel and I would like to come back to Poland. Ah, before that, okay, one thing that I, I am missing. You remember about the banks, you know, the poor banks that were frightening and I, am, I cannot blame them? Well, eventually, 17 years later, the value of the banks in Israel grew by four times with, while keeping the return on equity between 12 to 15 percent. It's a lot. As, as I told you at the beginning, instead of being big player in a small market, they became big player in a much bigger market that put Mrs. Kowalski in first place, in first interest. And as I told you, it's a win-win-win situation. No one loses in the Israeli market, and I believe that no one will lose also if you will do the same in Poland. And going back to Poland right now, look, I, I'm taking again the target that the KNF uh, is a state. I believe this is the target of each and every one of you. And I've added something uh, additional which is important, and I know I'm repeating it again and again and again. You need to understand investor in first place. If, it, if they will not be in first place, maybe not this year, maybe not in two years, they will go elsewhere. They have interactive brokers, they have other brokers, you know. You have a competition, it's not a, a closed garden. So based on those two targets, and based on our reform, I would like to suggest you two things out of this uh, reform. Of course, there are many other things we can make a, a, a whole day discussion about that, but I'm taking only those two things. And those two things are 
limitation on distribution fees, and creating an objective advisory system. And in order to show you how it could look like, <coughs> I made a little calculation. This is the way distribution fees are capped in Israel. Okay, uh, 35 basis points on aggressive uh, products, 10 basis points on uh, less aggressive products. So I took the total uh, TFI asset as of today, which is a low. I think it could be double, but let's take it as of today and calculated how much banks will earn uh, from distribution fees. Uh, and it came down to more than 300 million zloty a year, which is something like 25 basis points out of an AOM, which is very reasonable. You know, I'd be glad paying for my advisor, for my salesperson, those 25 basis points, because he, he, he needs to earn them. He's making a service, but at least it's, it's reasonable. It's not like what's happening today. The second thing I would like to suggest to you is to create an objective advisory system, and I've segmented it like in the army, you see a lot of soldiers outside, uh, into three segments. The first one, maybe you have it, maybe you don't, uh, I think that every bank should create for itself an objective advisory system, both quantity and quality, so it will be the base of every transaction for financial advisors, for, for, for clerks, this is the first thing. The second thing, and I know that it's, it's there, but I think you need to have a little bit more strict uh, uh, observation. I think that the KNF should, should have a strict regulation, both of financial advisors and also on bank branches, which means that in every financial transaction, uh, they will be there. And the last thing that I would like to suggest, you remember that in the Israeli model, the bank were forced to sell the mutual fund and the pension fund, which is very aggressive. I haven't seen something like that all over the world. So what I think I can suggest to you is do the following. And it is to create a Chinese wall between the banks and the products. So bank can hold the mutual fund and pension fund. It's okay, you know. You have the power, you have the knowledge, no problem. But the way the distribution in the banks will treat their own TFI, their own pension fund, will be the same as they are looking at NPZU, Scarbiac, Investor, Beta, whatever. This is the way banks will continue controlling whatever they would like, they will have the power, but they will compete in a fair play, in a fair play of a Poland capital market and not of bank ecosystem. And the last slide is something maybe to think about. You know, it's, it's very nice thinking about seven years. Uh, we don't know, maybe the world can turn around seven times until that. But I believe, and again, best of the experience that we had in Israel, that if you're succeeding in doing those reforms, and maybe some others, you know, I have many ideas based on the Israeli market, because the Israeli market is, is definitely very successful, uh, and I think we can learn out of it a lot. I think that uh, in, 2000, in, in 2030, uh, if you will do so, Polish investor will be in your first interest. Russia Stock Exchange and Russia and Poland Capital Market will be a regional leader. You have the power, you have the knowledge, you have great people here. You know, I'm, I'm in, in Poland for the last four years. I, I see how magnificent are you, are your, is your country, uh, how well educated uh, you, and how enthusiastic you in order to, to make this uh, market uh, progress. So I believe you can do it. And remember, and this is the way I will sum my presentation, remember what I said at the beginning. Don't be afraid of opening the market for more competition. I know at the beginning there is an uncertainty, but I, think I can tell you from my experience, you will not lose. It will be a win-win situation. It will be a win for the regulator, a win for the investors, and a win for the whole capital market. Thank you.